Anyway, don't watch any video on the internet and think that you're ready to pick psilocybin mushrooms. I would say that you need to find somebody who knows what they're doing and go with them. I take for granted that I have this knowledge. I, I didn't realize how many people didn't know this stuff. I've just always known about psilocybin mushrooms ever since like my teenage years when my friend first took me out and showed me. And I didn't even think that it was that crazy of a thing. I didn't use them until years later. So yeah, I've realized that I actually do have a lot of expertise or understanding of my local fungi. And I really, really think that it, it's time to share that. And I understand that there's a problem with sharing this information because people are curious and enthusiastic to get out there and try it for themselves. And then we cause all sorts of problems. So I'm talking directly to you right now. If you're one of those people who wants to get involved in this and wants to experiment and you want to uh, push the boundaries a little bit, make sure that you do it as, as responsibly as possible. Like take all the safety precautions into account, like do your harm reduction stuff. Set and setting is so important. Don't just like take a bunch of mushrooms and go to a nightclub and like have a psychotic episode. And then like that, that's going to just drive all of this research and everything that's going on right now with psilocybin mushrooms in the opposite direction and make people afraid of them again. And people have been using these things for, hundred thousand years probably beyond that and it's just a shame that there's this massive stigma around them when they're such an effective medicine and even clinical research is now beginning to reflect how many applications these things have for healing us one of the first things that you're going to read a lot about when you start researching magic mushrooms is that two grams is supposed to be a pretty standard dose but that can be a little bit confusing for beginners and I guess a little bit misleading in general because each individual mushroom can vary pretty significantly in its alkaloid content. I think the most potent mushroom that's ever been sampled was about 11 times stronger than the weakest mushroom that's ever been sampled. And even the psilocybe cubensis mushrooms that I showed you in this video, the strongest psilocybe cubensis that's been sampled was about 3.5 times stronger than the weakest psilocybe cubensis mushroom. And it's not even as simple as strongest and weakest because there are three individual alkaloids that come into play to produce your magic mushroom experience. Psilocybin, which is the compound that we're all familiar with, actually needs to be broken down by your body into psilocin, which is the second chemical compound that produces the psychedelic experience. And then there's a third compound that is called biocystin, which is completely unresearched, but from what the limited research that I was able to find says that it's about on par with psilocybin in terms of creating a hallucinogenic trip. So if you're taking a mushroom like Paniola cyanocens, which is the second mushroom in this video, they're really high in psilocin content and really low in psilocybin content. Psilocin is the compound that's ready to go. Your body doesn't need to do anything to it. It can go straight into your mind and start to take you off into the clouds. And for some people that would produce a negative experience. That might be too much for them to just be hoisted out of their reality. Whereas other people might be more prone to having a bad or negative experience if they took a mushroom like psilocybe cubensis, which has a higher psilocybin content and the trip just keeps gradually getting more and more intense and it's the stress of wondering when it's going to reach the point where everything's going to come back to normal and people will get into that mindset where they think they're going to be stuck like that forever and they're going to go insane and be assistant obviously is completely unresearched and we have no idea um, what goes on with that but the problem is it doesn't matter how much we understand these different compounds we don't we can't tell what we're eating. If you're just a hobbyist out there in the field picking mushrooms, you run the risk of taking way more drugs than you mean to. That's, there is no way to avoid that. Um, one of the ways that I would recommend is if you're taking mushrooms in a group, you brew it into a tea. You just boil the mushrooms or simmer them. If you over boil them, they will actually lose their potency. But that way, if you've picked a bunch of different mushrooms, say you've all picked like three mushrooms each and you put them into that into that tea then at least one person isn't accidentally taking 10 times more than everybody else and you'll all have a fairly even experience together and also another benefit of having the tea is that you can drink it slowly throughout the day you don't have to just eat three mushrooms and hope for the best so that's what i recommend and also 
body weight can play a really significant role in the magic mushroom experience. Recently, I took my brother for his first magic mushroom trip and he's about 100 kilos, I'm about 70. We had the exact same amount of magic mushrooms. I had a hallucinogenic experience. I was seeing visuals and he felt absolutely nothing. So your body weight, the amount of psilocybin and psilocin and beer cystin in the mushrooms, all of those things can play a significant role. And there's no way that somebody who's picking wild mushrooms in the field is gonna be able to control all of those variables. But, uh, but they, the research that they did is worth noting as well. They found that um, psilocybin mushrooms helped people quit smoking and the results that they got in that study were unprecedented. Nothing has come close to producing the results that they got using psilocybin to help people quit smoking. And I've never had that problem myself, but psilocybin mushrooms definitely helped me give up pharmaceutical prescription drugs and also alcohol. And probably a bunch of like low level addictions, like food addictions and things like that. And even emotional addictions, like they've definitely had that impact on me personally. So I can sort of give you a little bit of lived experience along with the research. And of course, sometimes there needs to be some kind of intervention for people who are experiencing debilitating paranoid delusions or debilitating manic visions for the world that are actually stopping them from living their best life. But in a lot of cases, that's not what's going on. People are just more imaginative or they express themselves in different ways. And psilocybin helps us to understand that. Psilocybin helps us to understand ourselves, helps us to connect with nature, be more empathetic, be more loving, helps us break addictions, helps reduce depression and anxiety. And I don't think that we should rule out this medicine as a therapeutic tool just because there might be some negative consequences. I mean, look at alcohol. It has a lot to do with so many of the health problems in our society. It's one of the leading causes of death and disability in people from ages 15 to 49. But you need to understand that in the harm reduction community, we feel that we're very pragmatic and we're very rational and we're looking at reality as it is. And people have always used drugs and we believe they will always use drugs in the future. And the solution isn't to try to take the drugs away because people will always find a way to get their hands on them. The solution is to help these people develop positive relationships with the substances that they're using. And in the long run, hopefully get them to a point where they don't need them at all. But personally, I'm really of the belief that trying to just take drugs away from people is not a solution because there's a reason why people take drugs.